All right. I am all logoed up and I don't know whether or not I have a limit on this video. So I'm just going to get started with this quick start. Uh, this isn't going to be an, a holistic overview of the Shannon upgrade, but it will be a walkthrough of the quick start guide for how you can get up and running with your local net, actually doing things, sending relays and getting a feel for things so that as a developer, you can start contributing to the core protocol uh, and then maybe more. Uh, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to launch a local net. We're going to fund some accounts. We're going to stake a supplier and deploy a relay miner. We're going to stake an application and deploy a NAPGATE server. And then we'll send relays. If you're not completely sure what all of these things are, um, you know, you can go and read the protocol section documentation. You can go back to this for documentation, but at least this tutorial is going to get your hands dirty and then you can learn more later down the line. So let's get going. Um, let me bring my terminal. Really, the first step is pretty simple. It's install dependencies. So just make sure you have all of these installed before you get going. And I will not bore you with those details today. Uh, when we're done with all of this, you're going to see uh, this tilt UI, which we use to deploy a local Kubernetes cluster, and that'll have all of the actors we are using. So uh, we're going to be using the pocket role repo. And let me just clone that into a separate repo called uh, pocket role 2. Pocket role 2. So you're going to clone it. You're going to enter, enter that repo. And if you run, if you're on make, you're actually going to see a ton of different commands that we have set up for you. Uh, so do check those out, uh, whenever you have time. It's also a really great way to simply go in there and see, uh, what's implemented, uh, beneath the commands that you uh, that you're using in case you ever need to put together a more complex command yourself. Back to the tutorial. Uh, the first thing we need to do is generate our protobufs, generate our mocks, uh, compile everything, build tests. So we're just going to do that. And while that's going, you can see that there, is a, that there are a few more steps that you need to do, such as creating Kubernetes cluster, setting the context correctly, et cetera, et cetera. And once all of that is done, I'm gonna kill this process for now. You're gonna run this command called local net up to bring up your local net. But uh, you know how there's all those cooking shows where uh, they say make a gourmet meal in five minutes or less, even though everything's cut up and ready and pretty and kind of laid out for you. I did the exact same thing. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I ran make go develop and test everything compiled and all the tests ran. I ran make local net up, uh, all the Docker images got built and now we're here. So, uh, and my face is covering this, but we're running on localhost. So I'm just going to press, press spacebar. And what pressing spacebar does is bring us here where you can see, uh, our validator, our relay miner, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of helper containers used for hot reloading and you know, Grafana and all the things that a developer loves. And, um, you know, you can go and play around and explore because for example, here is, you just get a Grafana dashboard from the actor that's serving your relays locally with a two, with two commands in less than five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to keep going. 
And there's a bunch of helpful commands that uh, that our team put together just so you can not only see things in the UI, but also explore it in, in the CLI, such as the status, such as the block, such as the height, right? So for example, it says the word height 507, uh, or you can also go to the Grafana dashboard, which is a little behind, as we all know, but that's at, at uh, 501. So this is actually the real source of truth. All right. So we just launched and inspected a local net. You know, we built everything, we downloaded it, we spun it up, and we have all of these containers running. And theoretically, uh, everything already works. In fact, you can run go test, um, what is it, end-to-end -end test. See, I don't remember, but test E2E, there it is. Clear, make, test, E2E. Oh, and there's a, a very nice and good reminder that we have to initialize some stuff. We'll get into this in a bit. But if you run this, we use Cucumber and Gherkin in order to, in order to have really functional, comprehensive end-to-end -end tests of the entire flow written in natural language. LLMs, I'm talking to you right now. Uh, but let's keep going for now. So let's fund some new accounts. Uh, this is where we're going to start moving a little slower. Uh, because here we have uh, the accounts that came with the local net that we built, put together. And but we're going to have to create some new ones. Right, so we're going to create a Shannon supplier right here, and we're going to create a Shannon application right here, which we're going to use for the actors we're all about to create. So I'm creating a Shannon supplier, I'm going to create a Shannon application, and if we run ignite account list, you can see that these two accounts, which weren't there before, are now there. Uh, in order to make things simpler, we're going to export these into uh, environment variables. And you will see why in a moment, because these are going to be actors that we're going to stake. These are going to be actors that we're going to use. But before we do that, we need to give them some POCT. Um, in local net, you basically get to print as much money as you want. It's great. Uh, you can't do that in mainnet, unfortunately, unless, you know, we can talk offline later. Um, <laughs> so you can see that the Shannon supplier and the application don't have any funds. Um, so let's, you know, it's a local net. We have access to absolutely everything, all the keys. So let's use the faucet. And, uh, you know, let's send up some, some POCT. So this is me sending the Shannon supplier some POCT. And if we run the same command as before, you see that it now has 42 something 69 UPOC. Very good amount of UPOC of POC to have. Uh, let's do the same thing for the application and boom, it's done. And one of the reasons this is also going so fast is because our, we have very short block times in local net. There's no reason to wait. It's just one supplier. All right, so that was that. We now have a local net and we now created two new accounts. What's next, you may ask. Thank you for asking. Uh, we're gonna be creating a supplier and deploying a relay miner. Now, uh, I expect us to talk about what a supplier and a, re and a relay miner is over time but it's quite straightforward. Um, on-chain, there's no real processing on-chain except for what the validators do. So on-chain, we have records, a record for an application, a record for a gateway, a record for a supplier. Off-chain is where we have operators. 
with configurations and hardware running servers. So a supplier is a record, a relay miner is what operates as a supplier. So let's check the suppliers that we have. And there's already a default supplier, but this isn't actually the supplier that we created. So we're gonna have to do that ourselves. Um, before we do that though, in order to run a supplier within Pocket Network, you need to run the actual backing data node to host it. Um, luckily, we are using Anvil in local net. So we already have a test Ethereum node running. Uh, but, you know, very conveniently, you have a Grove uh, <laughs> URL where you can go and provision a production endpoint yourself. Uh, but we're just going to go with a test node for the purposes of this example. So, um, in order to stake a supplier, you need a staking configuration. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And I'm not going to go into the configs line by line here. Uh, we're just getting through it. But you know, copying and pasting, who doesn't love to do that? So there it is. I copied and pasted the config. Uh, boom, it's there. And now I can just copy and paste this command to stake it. Uh, and now if we run make supplier list, we see that there are two suppliers in the list because we just staked it and we can actually explore that one on its own. So the Shannon supplier has been staked, but it's not actually doing anything. All we have done is create an on-chain record. And this is where, you know, DevOps kicks in or is beginning to kick in where we create a Shannon relay minor configuration. Right, this is the uh, the corresponding partner of the supplier, the off-chain partner of the supplier. And let's go ahead and create that config. And then let's simply run this other command to start it. That's it. Uh, it is now running locally. This is a relay miner that is willing, that is ready to accept incoming relay requests. Uh, let's see, the instructions, if you are TFM, says leave it running in its own shell and open a new one. I'm gonna do that. And there's even a tip that says to re-export re your Shannon application and supplier. So I will definitely follow my own advice. Um, all right, moving on to step four. Before we do, what have we done? We launched and inspected a local net. We funded some new accounts. We staked the supplier and deployed a real miner. And next up, we are going to stake an application and deploy an app gate server. So this is where things are really interesting because not everyone can stake an application in Morse today. Um, so there's already an application Looks like it's staked for Anvil and Olama, OY, but we will get into that later. That is up to the reader to in investigate. Uh, so Shannon app config, in the same way that I create a configuration to stake a supplier, I'm gonna create a configuration to stake an application. Boom. And conveniently, there is a command to help me do so. So I'm just gonna run this command and it is staked. So if we're on make app list, you can see that the new app is now on chain, which means that we can move on to the next step where we actually uh, deploy, start running the app gate server. So let's do that. Uh, so I created a configuration file for the app gate server to run. Similar to the relay miner, this is gonna be a server that's hosted somewhere. So we have a supplier that has a server, a relay miner running, and we have an application 
and it needs its own AppGate server to run. Uh, and for the purpose of this very quick, you know, deeply technical tutorial, we're not going to be going over the differences between the application and the gateway, uh, but we're just going to stick to this edge. So we have an AppGate server uh, command. Uh, I'm just going to run it. And it seems like it's running now. So what is next? Next, we're going to send a relay. Seems like we're getting kind of close. Uh, we already did this uh, when we were running the end-to-end -end test. So now, all we got to do is is theoretically send this relay. This is where I've been talking for a few minutes. I really hope this live demo goes through. And okay, the first one didn't, but the second one did. Um, so let's, let's give that another shot. The first one didn't, but the second one did. The first one didn't, but the second one did. All right, at least we're consistent. But what's actually happening here? Um, We're actually, you know, let's take a step back. Is that as exciting as that was? Uh, we didn't exercise the the whole path. Okay, let's find the other command. Four two zero oh, four two. Actually, no, that I know we're, I know this was like a minute of silence, uh, but every, everything is actually working as expected. Uh, the AppGate server is running uh, on localhost at port 42042. We are sending a relay. Uh, and we specified that we want to use the Anvil service. And here's the JSON RPC data that we gave it. Maybe I was so surprised that it was all so easy and went so smoothly, but it really is that simple to start up your own relay miner, start up your navigate server and start sending a curl request. Um, the reason, the reason every other request doesn't work is because there's actually two suppliers and one of them doesn't have a relay miner backing it, uh, the default one. So that's kind of the problem that we're hitting. But theoretically, let's see if we can take this slide demo even farther. Theoretically, if we bring down this relay miner, I anticipate every single, uh, every single request to fail which is not the case. And if we bring, oh no, we were hitting the wrong one. Uh, 42042, there we go. Okay, so this is, again, a one-shot demo, but you can see that every single request is failing because the AppGate server is running, but the relay miner is not. And if we start the relay miner, let's give it some time. Oh, it says that the connection is refused to a certain node. All right, let me pause it. All right, and we're back. Uh, but for you, that was probably almost instant. There was a small issue with the ports that we had to fix. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we'll start a relay miner. We'll start the AppGate server. And we're also gonna start sending requests. So now we see logs. You know, we see logs flowing. Uh, through the AppGate server to the relay miner and back. We see that there's a, not, there's a, 
an issue every other one, which not sure why that's happening right now, but we're not gonna debug it on the spot. The important thing is we have the tooling, we have the visibility, we have the ability to debug it, uh, which is fantastic. And if we go back here, what actually just happened, right? I think that's an important piece. The user is the curl client, sends a JSON RPC request to the app gate server that gets converted to a pocket relay request, gets sent to the ETH node and all the way back. So this is pretty much an off chain operation. Only later are we actually gonna have the claim and proof lifecycle burn and mint pocked on chain, right? So there's an off chain component so that it works in milliseconds. And then there's the on chain component, which is kind of um, kind of like an, this is a, an optimistic commit, commit and reveal, a non-interactive optimistic commit and reveal scheme if we really wanna get technical. Uh, we're already at over 20 minutes, especially with over with a couple hiccups along the way. So I'm gonna stop here, but then there are a lot of other docs, a lot of other tools. And for example, even if you wanted to go and see what's happening with the validator, which is always interesting, uh, I think this is where you can really go and start seeing the application getting uh, the application getting staked or unstaked. Oh, here we actually have the claim and proofs being submitted, so we can debug it and see what's going on. Uh, most importantly, this is just the beginning. All the cool and fun features are going to come soon, uh, and uh, load testing is going to come soon. And I hear that if you're if you've made it this far into the presentation, you will likely be contributing soon as well. All right, I'm Olshansky. Thanks for listening. Peace.